Hello, we are going to talk about the increasing challenges of malware and digital communication, focusing on phishing, malicious SMS, and social media scams to enhance our understanding and be safer in the digital world. Hi, this is Corinne Connerino, a cybersecurity intern at TLT, and for my section, I will be talking about phishing emails, how to spot them, and how to mitigate them. One thing that's important to remember is that phishing emails will lie to you about charges you don't remember making. Some emails will even send you false warnings about your account getting deactivated. These very emails will give you a link to go fix this false problem. And that link will lead you to a site that looks like it belongs to a major company, such as iTunes or Netflix. If you ever get one of these emails, first thing you want to do is check the email address. A genuine email from the company is not going to have these weird letters or numbers on it. It's just going to say uh, no reply at company.com. And next thing you want to do is log into your account on the company's natural website. That way you can check the purchases and status of your account to see if it's expiring. If you click on the link provided in the email, which I suggest you do not do, you will see a form that will ask for your social security number. No company is ever going to ask for that except banks. And even then you have to call in. If you ever find one of these phishing emails in your inbox, the first thing you want to do is forward that email to the actual company's report phishing email address, such as report phishing at iTunes.com or phishing at Netflix.com. You also want to forward another copy of the email to the general spam place, which is spam at uce.gov. I've told you about phishing emails and how to watch out for them. Now I'm going to show you what to do if you ever get a phishing email and how to spot the obvious signs. Thankfully, my mom was kind enough to forward a phishing email to me. This one in particular is a warning about how her Netflix account expired. Now, it says from Netflix, but look at the email address here. See all these pointless letters here? And it's from 4starplastic.com. Now, if it was from Netflix, it would read netflix.com. But you see here that this does look legit, and it can freak people out. I should know. I've been freaked out by one of these myself. And now it talks about how you can extend for free. Yeah, Netflix is not giving you anything for free. Now, you never, ever want to click on this because it will lead you to something that looks legit, but it's fake. And just by clicking, you alert spammers to your location, which is why I'm afraid to click right now to show you the website because I don't want to destroy my computer. Now, like I said, you want to forward this email. And I am looking for the forward thing right now, which is right here. And you want to forward it to phishing at netflix.com as well as spam at uce.gov. Now, I'm not going to send this because this was forwarded by my mom and they might think my mom is the fisher, so no chances. But if you ever get any of that, do send it. And now I'm going to compare it to a more legitimate email address. Okay, I get a lot of emails as you see. First time I'm letting somebody actually see my email address. This is like one of three, but not important. So this is one from Apple. Here it says no reply at email.apple.com. Notice that the first part says no reply, as often happens when you get emails from a company. And apple.com is in the email. There is no, there is no letters, no numbers, no jumble of anything. And that's how you know it's legit. In this section, we will talk about text and SMS phishing messages. We will tell you how to spot suspicious text and how, how to mitigate what you should do once you receive such a text. At some point, you must have received a suspicious looking text. 
anything with the link to click for a prize or track plastic package that you didn't order, something to fill in your personal information, some offers or prices, something to pay off your loans, saying something like your account has been compromised or your payment is compromised or maybe a fake invoice. Sometimes it can be from a person you may think you know and they might say hello. All these can be suspicious. If you do receive a text or an SMS message with a link, you should not click on it. If it says your account has been compromised, you should go directly to your bank's website, type in the website address and check if it's true. You should never give out your personally identifiable information, such as your birthday, your address or your social security number. You should never give out any financial information, such as your bank account number or your credit card number. Always copy the message and forward it to 7726 or block it and report it. You can also report messages like this to the FTC at reportfraud.ftc.gov. As you can see in this video, this is a spam message. You can select block number to block this message and that will report it and make it disappear. Here is an unwanted message that I received. I can choose either to block it or I can choose to send a stop message. So you can type stop and then send that and that will stop any more messages from this number. And you can also block it if you want to do that. In this section, we are talking about social media phishing attacks. A social media phishing attack is a type of cyber attack that targets users of social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or Instagram. In this attack, a cyber criminals use various tricks users to disclose the private data such as credit card numbers, passwords, personal information, login credential, and financial details. So how do we recognize all these phishing attacks? So first of all, we have to check in the message if anything grammatical errors the message has. Spellings and grammar issues ought to be the red flags in correspondence because scammers frequently commit these mistakes. An unusual sender behavior, if a brand new social media account seems to be approaching to you, it might be a false one. What is a spooked account? So check, one, check someone's account again if you receive a message or request from someone you already know. Their profile might have been hacked. Look out any random message that you get that includes a link. Any request from money, financial support should be avoided, specifically if it is made without a request. Link or attachment. Try to avoid all the clicking on links, downloading attachment from suspicious messages as they may contain malware or lead to phishing websites. Here are some simple steps for social media safety or some suggestions of what you do if you encounter a social media scam. A social network might update its privacy settings to give you more precise control over how your data is used. So disable the ability to click on links and messages from unknown or untrusted sources. Try to block the text from people that are unfamiliar, suspicious, so as to stop communication. Definitely check who has access to your social media management platform or social accounts. Try to install and regularly update security software such as antivirus programs and firewalls to help protect against malware and other online threats. Try to monitor social media activity for signs of suspicious behavior such as unusual messages or requests for sensitive information. Try to report your fake account if someone has created. 
So this is the Facebook security and privacy setup demonstration. When you log into your Facebook account, you can find a setting and privacy from the drop down menu. When you click on it, you can find a privacy checkup as shown here. Then you can edit your name, username, contact information, manage account security settings. You also can enable two factor authentication, review logged in devices, set up alerts for unrecognized logins, manage app passwords and all. You also can control who can see your future posts, review or manage your posts, limit the audience for past posts. You can also control who can post on your timeline, review posts you are tagged in before they appear on your timeline. And also you can block specific users, block messages from specific users, manage your blocked user lists. Also, the good part is you can review and manage the apps or website you have logged in in your Facebook remove any apps or websites you no longer use or trust and manage app settings. You also can control who can see your profile information or who can tag you in post or review your tags before they appear on your timeline. To conclude our presentation, through cybersecurity shows that with the right knowledge and tools, facing malware and cyber scams head-on isn't just possible, it's essential for all our digital safety.